Hello everyone, this is Margarita with City Gal Pepper Tree and I'm going to share how I made this junk journal with you today. As you can see, I, I put it together already. I decided what uh, pages I wanted to use just from uh, things in my you know junk pile, things that were left over from other projects. You can see there's a pocket there and um, just some leftovers from other albums and things that I've been creating lately. Uh, here's an envelope that I included in there. Here's a piece of scrap that I do later remove. Here's a pouch from packaging and I do something with that. I make it a shaker. Uh, here's just a few more pages. These are some uh, decorated paper clips that I have on my Etsy shop. Uh, another uh, panel using scrap paper and yeah just a bunch of leftover pieces from other projects i include them all in this junk journal i'm almost done with it and i'll do a flip through once it's completed all the way through i do also distress all the pages you can see there the that those uh, couple pages are distressed on the edges and I do later in the video show you how I go through and do that with all of the rest. Here's some extra graph paper from another junk journal, a crumpled up baggie that a uh, glassine bag that I had lying around and just a few more junk pages. The cover was actually a poster board that I knew I wasn't going to use in any way so I just folded it in half and I punched uh, all of my uh, I forget what you call these tea holes with that create 365 happy planner uh, hole punch and these are disc uh, punches so you know I'm using discs as my closure uh, and then or as my binding uh, method and then I had this piece that uh, was left over from one of the recent mini albums that I made and it already had two holes so I'm gonna attach this to the back page there and then um, I'm gonna follow those hole marks and then create holes on the back cover and then fold it over as such to create the cover for the album and I'll go over that uh, when we get there right now I decide I'm gonna remove all the pages that have blank uh, backgrounds and I'm gonna grab some acrylic paints. This is how I keep my acrylic paints in this little like Lazy Susan uh, organizer. And I pick out four colors of acrylic paint. I didn't wanna get too crazy. And I'm gonna do like some abstract marks and lines and such on all of the backs that are completely blank. And by using the same colors on all of them and similar marks, It'll give the album a sort of cohesive feel. So this way, as you like flip through it, you'll see similar colors and marks throughout the whole thing. Um, I grabbed this a panel that was left over from a card base that I had made a mistake on. And then I grabbed this other, um, and then I grabbed this Martha Stewart uh, edge punch. And I punch this little um, lace pattern on the edge. What do you call these? This is a border punch. I use this Martha Stewart border punch that looks like lace to punch the side of that piece of paper. And yeah, I'm going through with my scissors and just distressing all of the edges for these pages before I start to paint. And you can see I already have my brushes ready and I'm just quickly going through my pile and just distressing all of the edges. Uh, they have a tool that actually does this distressing for you, but you can use your scissors. Uh, that works perfectly fine. This is a very messy process, just FYI for anybody who hasn't done that before. Then I have this little palette, which is actually a container for chocolates. Um, I think I got some like chocolates for Valentine's Day and I kept the, the little container because it looked like a palette and I use it for painting. Uh, so I put my paint colors in. I have my cup with water and my brushes ready and some paper towels and I just start to go right in. I'm not thinking about anything specific. I'm not looking to create anything perfect here. I just didn't want the backs of those pattern papers to be completely blank. 
Um, that's very intimidating when you're trying to scrap through a journal to, you know, turn the page and it's like completely blank. Um, so this way, at least I have sort of a head start on, on it and I could just work from there. So I go through these four colors, as you can see, and I'm just creating some random marks, lines, dashes, circles, X's, swirls, whatever whatever I can come up with as my brush is touching the paper. I'm really trying to think very little about what I'm doing. I'm just doing, you know, it's just like that process where you're just kind of like going with the flow. I think right now I do show you pretty much all, almost all of them that I do. So I'm going to uh, play some music and you know, hope that you enjoy the process of me prepping all these pages and then I will return to chat in just a little bit.
Now that my pages are complete and all dry, I am going to go through and add some doodles with my with a black gel ink pen. But this is what the completed pages look like. I did paint a little bit on some of the pattern side of uh, some of the pages. But mostly you see I just did some marks and stuff on the backs where there was nothing before. And um, oh, before I do the doodles, I do grab some black acrylic paint and add a little bit of water to water it down and this little round brush and I add spritzes to almost every page not every single one but I do add it to most of the pages and this is just to add another layer of uh, pattern or design so that um, I have something to work off of and I'm, I'm not you know feeling too intimidated when I get to each page And then, uh, like I mentioned previously, I do take a black gel ink pen and I add some doodles on, again, almost all of the pages over and around the painted portions. And uh, I really just chose, you know, lines, squiggles, swirls, squares, shapes, you know, just pretty much anything to fill in some of the spaces where the paint was. I also add some journaling lines that I can write on. I trace some of the, the paint marks and I really like how that turned out. This is the, the pen I use. It's Paper Mate Ink Joy and it works really well. And then I grab some stamps, random stamps that I either haven't used before or just want to use in journaling and then these distress oxide inks that is uh, candied apple the previous one was picked raspberry this is fossilized amber and uh, peacock feathers and a black onyx versafine ink pad and this is what i'm going to use to add uh, some stamping to my pages i also have an acrylic block this stamp set was gifted to me by my pen pal uh, thank you Daisy and I've been looking for a reason to use this so this was perfect um, and then I do start inking it up and then I realized I didn't prime it first uh, so when you have a new acrylic stamp it's good to rub it either on a rough surface or dry surface to kind of prepare the um, the actual stamp to grab ink uh, you could do it without this but it won't come out as crisp so I um, prime my stamp ink it up and then put that image down and I repeat this process pretty much for most of the pages I don't add stamping to every single page I just kind of go through and again just fill in spots here and there now, I'll include the name of this stamp set in the description below I don't remember what it is right now but it is really pretty and um, I mean you can see my style is kind of different I don't know I, I, I tried to find inspiration online when I started this junk journal and I, I found just a lot of really beautiful junk journals that were vintage style and I'm not a vintage style person I like how it looks but I normally can't pull off vintage it ends up looking like what I'm doing right now <laughs> no matter what I do it just never looks actually vintagey so I decided to just not even try I'm just going with what I feel and that's usually just this more modern uh, type of pattern paper, which is what I have on hand anyway. Uh, same with the stamps, you know, use whatever you guys have on hand. If you try and, you know, if you want to repeat this type of process or this project, uh, please use what you have. You know, you don't have to go out and buy anything. That's always my motto is just use what you have because uh, we have wonderful things in our stash. You don't even need actual stamps. You can stamp with a potato if you want to. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's kind of what using your resources is all about is um, you know use what you have on hand
and I continue going through my pages here just adding bits and marks and stamps and um, I've been working on this journal almost exclusively so it should be complete soon and then I will do a flip through once it's done here's it here's the the journal completed with the cover done and you can see I use that piece that I showed you in the beginning and I punch the holes through the back flap the back page and then I added some eyelets and that gauze ribbon with a bow for some detail and then I, I added another hole with another eyelet and a ribbon super simple knot I didn't do anything fancy so that then uh, when you close it over it looks like a folio you see you close it over you fold over the you close it fold over the the flap and then I used that button brad on the other end to be able to catch the ribbon to wrap it around and I put it I put the brad through the center through the middle of the folded page so you wouldn't see the backing of it so it's only going through one layer and then I wrap my ribbon around and that's how it closes and I really like how this turned out I also rounded the corners of the flap so it looks a little bit more finished And this is another, uh, this is one last flip through. I also, you can see that I painted on some of the pattern side of the papers. And there I added some journaling lines and some stamping words. Here's some more stuff that uh, kind of lend themselves to filling them in, you know? Sorry, there's a fire truck going by my window. And here's another little flap, that graph paper that I can journal and write on. Lines paper that I can journal on as well. That page, that blue page, I didn't, I didn't really like how it turned out, but um, I do end up covering it up. And this is the little plastic pouch. I sewed uh, along the top and the left hand side so that my contents wouldn't fall out and then I filled it well, I filled it first and then I sewed it um, with glitter and sequins. And then I covered the stitching with some washi tape. Here's another journaling page that I created. Some more little marks and dashes. I didn't do anything with that envelope. And uh, is this the, the last of it? Yeah. I have that pocket and then a couple more pages that I can work on. I hope you like this process. Um, I know I didn't show like the complete making of the journal, but I didn't think that was necessary. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I punched the holes and put the rings through. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, please include that below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And I will see you all hopefully in the flip through of this journal. See y'all next time. Bye.